Friends, today we're going to start with design. And this, an unusual sunny break in the weather of what is an unusually rainy time in Portland, Oregon, specifically Salvia Island. Uh, now, design. I would argue if you are the chief designer of Range Rover, uh, Porsche, specifically the 911 business, and Mini, you have an incredibly difficult task on your hands because you got into design to bring your vision of cars to that specific brand. However, in these three specific cases, if you change things too much, the people, the faithful of these brands will come after you and have you publicly drawn and quartered. So with that, I am here to tell you that this is a completely new Mini even though it looks like most minis that came before it. Yes, this is the extra large version. That aside, there are some changes. Uh, like for example, along the uh, side of the vehicle, there's creases, believe it or not. And then for the first time I've ever seen in a mini, sorta squarish headlights. And then the front, if I'm honest, kind of looks pissed off. So that's design. Now let's put aside all of the things outside and let's talk about the things underneath the hood. Now the designers may not have complete free reign on the outside. The engineers, they have more flexibility underneath the hood. Here there are three propulsion systems that are on offer. Let's start with the basic one, which is a 1.5 liter dry cylinder, three cylinder engine. It is what BMW calls the twin power turbo setup. In the case of an inline four or an inline six, that means a single turbocharger, direct injection, variable valve timing and variable cam lift and that all works together to ram more air into the engine. Uh, in terms of output that is 134 horsepower which comes in a relatively aggressive 4400 rpm and 162 pound-feet of torque which comes in at a very low 1250 rpm and remember that's three cylinders that's getting peak torque at 1250. That's pretty incredible. Let's talk about what this specific car is, and this is the Cooper S. So that goes to the big engine, which is four cylinders. So the four cylinder, it puts out 189 horsepower, which comes in at a very aggressive 5,000 RPM, but the torque 207 comes in at 1250. Uh, now this one's a two liter four cylinder. Okay, so let's put this aside and there's a third one on offer and this is new for many and that is a plug-in hybrid. So that's strapping the three cylinder engine we just discussed with an electric motor that is 87 horsepower, it's 122 pound-feet of torque and it can work up to 77 miles an hour and provide 24 miles of range. Now when you combine the gasoline engine and the electric motor, it gives 221 horsepower, total system horsepower, and get this, for a Mini, 284 pound-feet of torque in a Mini. Okay, so we've covered underneath, let's talk about some of the driving dynamics. Now here we need to put aside the usual suspension bits because there are a number of other things we need to point out. This is not a Mini, or really it's not a Mini Mini. This is a very large vehicle. To give you an idea, the wheelbase, 105.1, the overall length, 169.8, and the ground clearance, 6.8. So very different than any other Mini you and I have driven. The other thing that's a bit different, this is all-wheel drive, not necessarily a first, but this one is all-wheel drive. And when you get into all-wheel drive, it kind of changes the different transmissions that are on offer. So remember we talked about the three-cylinder. Uh, any transmission you want as long as it's a six-speed, whether it's an automatic or a manual. Then you move up to the Cooper S. If you do an automatic, anything you want as long as it's an eight-speed, the manual stays at a six-speed. Then in that plug-in version, and this I'm rather excited about because now we've driven a couple of others like this, it is a plug-in hybrid that is not a CVT, it's a six-speed automatic transmission. Okay, so let's put that aside and let's talk a little bit about some of the other changes. Now we are not going to drive the full plug-in version, it's not an offer yet, we'll probably cover that somewhere over the summer. Uh, so the engineers have been somewhat reticent in giving us total details, but from what I understand, the electric motor will drive the rear wheels in this case, like a la Volvo XC90 T8, 
And there's not just the, it's an all-wheel drive vehicle driving the rear wheels with an electric motor. It also changes the gas tank. So the gas tank capacity of this one is almost 17 gallons, where the gas tank capacity of a plug-in is just under 10 gallons. So let's do the math. The weight of a gallon of gas is just under seven pounds. So if you just do some rough math, you're saving about 50 pounds between the two just by not carrying more gasoline. Now, we do need to discuss something here. This is not a light vehicle. So for example, the lowest weight version of the Mini Countryman is the manual three cylinder, that's 3,300 pounds. Move up to the Cooper all wheel drive automatic, it is just a shade under 3,700 pounds. So uh, you and I will need to unpack that in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. Now let's press on to the interior. Now on the inside there are a couple things going on. First and foremost, like the outside, the design theme has not changed. You still have the large bezel and the screen in the center. And being that I've been on Mini Takes the States and met a number of the owners, like 900 of them, I too would not want to face their wrath if any of this has changed. That said, there are a couple of things that were tweaked, let's call it. For example, the more straight lines that we see on the outside, that is now repeated in the top of the dash as well as the bottom of the dash. Then you know how we kind of joke around in Porsche episodes, how Porsche makes everything optional? Like for example, that Cayenne you and I just drove, that didn't have a rear camera and it didn't have a Porsche like drive and go, whatever it is. Basically you put this in your pocket, go up to the car, hit the button, open the door, hit the button, start the car. This is now fitted as standard in the Countryman's as well as some like faux leather system here. And believe it or not, uh, the panoramic roof, that is now fitted as standard in all Countryman's. There are still some options, because after all, this is a BMW. This one is fitted with a technology package, so the screen is almost nine inches diagonal. Um, but overall, I gotta tell you, I really like what Chris and the team have done in here, specifically with color and trim, especially the textures here all have a high tactile feel. And then there's one thing I gotta point out, there are speakers underneath the front seats. I have no idea what they do, but there are speakers underneath each seat. Okay, let's go back outside. Now, there's one more thing. And this is not just unlike other minis because it is larger, it is unlike other minis because it's not based on a traditional mini platform. It's based more from the BMW side of things. And we will unpack that in the full first drive review when we drive it around some of the beautiful roads of Oregon. Um, but in the interim, I do want to leave you guys with a question. And the question is all about design. We've talked about chiseled lines and square headlights and frowns in the front. Do you like the design update? If you do, let me know why. If you don't, also let me know why. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All One Word, Moto Man TV All One Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, YouTube is incredibly stupid. Uh, they have changed the subscription module and that when you subscribe to me or other creators, uh, you no longer get notified of new episodes like this. So you have to go in and click notifications. So I uh, would love it if you could go in and click notifications so we can update you when we have new episodes. And then number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So David and I came here yesterday, Salvi Island, to shoot this and we had maybe half of the tech review done. The sky opened, like literally opened. And even before that, I came up to uh, Oregon to visit with family, one of which works for Columbia. And we were in the Columbia employee store and he was saying, you need a raincoat. I'm like, I don't need a raincoat. I live in California. Well, as you can see, I bought the raincoat and apparently I needed it yesterday. Until I see you next time, bis später.